Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Hi. So last name's Firestone, so it kind of works with lit. Firestone lit. So we're, we're, we're lit. Uh, and and I, I am appreciative that everybody came tonight. And the Malouls do an amazing job. And I'm, and I'm honored to be here and thankful to be here. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. So in the next few minutes, here's what we would like to do. Torah is practical, and Torah is what I've been working on for the last 35 plus years. I was not raised with Torah. I was raised in Pacific Palisades, West LA, and went to Pali High, did all that. And, and then in my 20s, um, with the help of some USC professor who got me started looking at what life's all about, I started tracing down and tracking down what life's all about. And one thing led to another, and I found Asia Torah, and Asia Torah gave me tremendous wisdom for living. So tonight, what I'd like to do is give you the, re the results of the last 35 years of my checking out what life's about. And it's practical, it's simple, and that's how I think. I like things that are just, you know, not too complicated, but they get you there. So we're, gonna, we're going to, the next few minutes, do a two-part what life's about and how to improve the quality of life. So I assume everybody here is smart, intuitive, humble, curious, and I, and I feel like, um, from what Rabbi Mulul tells me, that, that everybody's really thinking, and thinking de deeply. And, and I, I, you may have heard the initials FIO, but I'm a little bit of, uh, obsessed with FIO. What's FIO? Figure it out. I wanted to figure it out. So starting in my teens, 15, 16, 17, I would just, I, I, I observed the world and I said, I was on a fast track to college, good job, grad school, family, golf course, retirement, and then, and then I just, you know, and then? So that, that kind of bothered me a little bit, right? So the first five, 10 minutes, I want to give you a very simple, pictorial cartoon that was drawn by a young girl in our community um, of life. It's really simple. It's easy to remember. And this is, this is our life, okay? We're going to call the first five, ten minutes of tonight is the trip, your life, okay? It's not high tech. It's kind of low tech, but the wisdom's high tech, okay? Okay, here. So this is your life and my life and everybody's life. Slide one. Slide two. Take off. Okay, this is the beginning of our, all of our lives. What's take off? That's called birth. Very good. It's birth. That's so we take off. So at some point, we're all here, we took off at some point. Now, we were not particularly prepared for the flight when we took off, were we? Basically, they handed us a bottle and a blanket, and then we were toddlers, and we grew up in kindergarten and elementary school and junior high school and middle school, and, high, uh, and, and we took off. And before you know it, my gosh, we're flying. Now, I you know, woke up at you know, 16, 17 thinking, okay, I'm flying, but where am I going exactly? I have no idea, but I was on the fat, you know, you go with the flow, you go with the track, you know, it's college, it's job, it's better. So I'm up there and I'm thinking, okay, you look around and you wonder, okay, what's supposed to go on here? So all of us have this wonderful plane called free choice. We all have, we're up and running, we're flying, we're making choices all day long, all day long. That's our life. The problem is, where are we going? Now, you're up and you're flying. Where are we going? So uh, a number of years ago, um, my wife and I went to Paris, France, which some of you have probably been to. It's a beautiful city. There was one problem. We got there and I was kind of responsible for the trip. And we got there and I had done basically no planning. So we got there at this beautiful hotel and it's a big city. And we looked out the window and I said, it's a lot of old buildings and some parks. If you're not careful, that's what Paris looks like. 
So I had not prepared for the journey and I had not prepared for the destination. So basically we popped on the television. I think it's even pre-CNN. Maybe CNN existed, I don't even know. But we were in the, we were in the room and my wife was like, like, now what are we gonna do? Okay, you can get some good food, let's find some kosher restaurants, but what are we doing here, okay? So the mistake that I made was before I got there, I not only really meditated on where am I going and what do I do when I get there? Now. Got everybody good? Good, okay. So we worked it out, we got some tour books, and we had a mildly good time, and then we went to Israel after, so it really got better and better, okay. Now, here's the end of the journey, okay. Landing. Now landing, we know what that is. Right, <laughs> right. You gotta land the plane at some point. <laughs> That's right. It's a, very un it's a very unpopular word, that D word. So we, you know, they're like D words. I don't really like D words so much. You know, you got death and divorce, but, but that's the landing strip is, is when we leave the world and the Jews have an ideal age for leaving the world, but nobody knows when, it, when the plane lands, nobody. The problem is, you know, pre Torah, you know, it's kind of out there, the, the landing strip, but you don't know, nobody told me growing up that actually the Jews believe in life after life. We believe the soul lives on after the body stops. Now, I didn't know that. So basically, I was on a journey at some point, and I was going to arrive at that destination, which I didn't know existed, and no clue what to do when I got there, okay? So that's, it's a gentle way of saying that's our life. Take off, in flight, landing. But this is good news. Because when I was growing up, I had no idea that the Jews believed in the existence of a soul and an afterlife. That was big news. You know where I learned that? From a non-Jewish professor at USC in a philosophy class. Nobody told me that, which is, you know, we say in Chinese, mashugana, <laughs> mashugana, okay? Okay, so, but, so what I wanna talk about is a simple plan, and I like simple, that works, it's, it's understandable, that you can use it and actually actually remember it. So what we're going to do in the next few minutes is I'm going to show you a very simple plan, a blueprint for how to manage the flight. So when the plane lands, you'll feel like I'm ready. That's a good thing, okay? Because those who are... Um, in flight, don't know where they're going, and don't know what to do when the plane lands, that's not good, okay? So in the next few minutes, we're gonna talk about a simple plan, which is called the juggler, okay? Simple, understandable, you'll remember it, I think it's of great value. Now, light plans, are a dime a dozen. So one could consult with many different sources to get a life plan. You could consult with your parents. You could consult with your siblings. You can consult with your friends. You could consult with YouTube. You could consult with your professors, your bosses, your friends. That's one way to get a clarity on what life's about and how to run in flight, you know, how to prepare for this life and the next life, that's really good. Another process you could do is you could do highly inefficient called trial and error, okay? Really inefficient, okay? Because what happens if, if you do trial and error and you're wrong, then it's a high stakes game, right? That was, you don't wanna play with this one chance you have of getting it right. So you wanna make sure that, that you can go to number three choice of where to get your life plan there's a life plan which was, which was revealed to humanity 3, 000, about 3,300 years ago at Mount Sinai. It's called the Torah. And, and this life plan has been used for about 3,300 years successfully. So I didn't know about this life plan, but it existed and I wasn't told about it. So luckily what I'm gonna do is take a beginning opening of the Torah's blueprint for life and share it with you. 
That's the goal in the next few minutes. Yeah, clear? What I'd like to do is, is if you have any questions, comments, complaints, revelations, just stop me, okay? I like to be stopped. So anything is, anything is not crystal clear, geyser clear, what do you have? geyser water, crystal, crystal, crystal geyser water clear, just stop me. I like it, okay? Dave. Dane. Dane. Yes. yes. Quick question. Did you yeah. draw that? No. Uh, her name, I think it, her last name is Sachs, and, she, and it's a beautiful young family in the community. And I know she was a good artist. So I Russia. said, what? They look great. Aren't they cute? They're amazing. They're yeah. cute. It was smaller. I just blew it up and put it on a board. Wow. Yeah. It's really nice. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I could have done it, but it wouldn't have, wouldn't have been near. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Any other questions? No? Keep going. Okay, good. So that's our goal in the next few minutes. The other thing which is um, awakening and stunning is it says in the Talmud, it says, and, you, and I think you all have heard this, if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? If I'm only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? So the, there, each part of that is important, but one thing which is key is, if it hit me a number of years ago, if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? Which means I'm flying the plane. You can't depend on parents, friends, professors, bosses, rabbis. You can't, we're flying our own plane. So which means we gotta know where it's going, how to steer it, and, and we gotta make sure we're, we're on the, we know where we're going, how to fly the plane, which is our life which is our choices, okay? Everybody, everybody good? Good. Okay. Here, one of my favorite teachers, not my, one of them, my favorite teacher um, who brought me up and gave me great, the greatest wisdom was a man named Rabbi Noah Weinberg. He started Asia Torah about 40 years ago, he passed away about 12 years ago. So he, he gave me a secret to enjoying every day, like a plan, a sustainable joy plan. And he, get, he used to say the following, growing every day, that's living. Growing every day, that's living, okay? And it, it seeped in over the years. Like he said it many years ago, and it kind of like was in my, in my subconscious, but then it started emerging thinking, if I'm growing every day, that's fun. That's creative. The question is, how do you grow every day? That's the question. How do you do it? Now you can grow in different ways. And you'll see in the following ways, following, following five areas are areas we can all grow in. And when you look at people that you think are doing it right, who are successful, who are happy, you will note the following. They are balanced people they spend time in five areas. And it's kind of inviolable. And are you ready for me to turn over the magical juggler? Yes? Good. Okay, we're gonna land the plane. The planes are good, ready to go? Dane, good? Good. Solid. Okay, solid. Okay, here we go. We're going over here. I can't give it to you, right? Not yet, okay. There was a man named Ben Franklin, and he said the following, very famous, he said a lot of good things. The one thing he said was, those who fail to plan are planning to fail. Good. In other words, one can go along, there, this is a stunning conclusion, a stunning revelation. If you don't plan your life, it's gonna happen, but it might not happen the right way. So we have to take charge of our life and begin to plan our destination. Now, the Maluls planned, had a blueprint for this property and it's emerging, right? It's clear, it's emerging, it's beautiful, it works, they got a family, they have classes, very well planned. But they first, the Maluls, I know they had an idea in their brain, they created, had an idea in their brain, and then they hired an architect and they drew it up and they probably had a couple incarnations of the blueprint. And then they hired a, uh, what do you call it, a contractor and he started building, okay? So what I'm gonna show you is a very simple blueprint for a successful life. And you'll say, 
Firestone, no biggie, I got it. This is not a biggie. I got this already. That's true. And I'm glad everybody will have this down clear once I turn it over. You'll, and, which means it's already inside of you, which means it's not big learning, which means you can start operating with it. That's good news. Okay. So a good life is not going to happen by itself. It, it will if you have a blueprint and you start building your life and managing your time. Okay. Here, this is a simple blueprint for life and the people who do it right. This is called the juggler. It's a juggler, a life juggler, is somebody, is somebody who is giving regular attention to these five areas. And we'll go over them really quickly. And then we'll go back a little more in depth. Okay? They give attention. By the way, everything here is based on three books besides the Torah itself. A book called Perikiavos, which is from the Talmud. A book called Maimonides uh, Hilchas Deos, which is from the Mishnah Torah. And a book called Path of the Just. Those are all three books I highly recommend. And Rabbi Malul will be happy to direct you where you can get those books. You've probably already learned them already. But most of what's coming here is from those three books, just distilled and made simple. Okay, good. One has to give attention to the body. One has to give attention to the soul. One has to give attention to family and friends. One has to give attention to their career. One has to give attention to the community. In other words, me, me taking care of the community outside of family friends. In other words, I have to take care of the world. Okay? It is possible you'll come up with some slight variation on this, but I think if you think about it and you, and you meditate on the people in your life who you think are getting it right, who are not happy all the time, but are happy most of the time and are grounded and have sort of like a, a peaceful way about them, they are giving attention to all five of these areas. Yes? Yeah? Good. Can I go on? Good. Okay. Here's the problem. We have this thing, which is called, let me get close to the camera, the Yetzirah. Okay? The Yetzirah is our built-in, you can't do it voice. This is too hard voice. No way. I've seen good, th good ideas before voice. Forget it. You know, can we get back to, it's, just, it's the naysayer. We all have one. And the problem with the Eight Sahara is, you know how he works 24 seven. I used to think he, he shows up once in a while, but no, when you wake up in the morning, your Eight Sahara woke up before you. He's waiting to give you a run for your money. And the Eight Sahara in a nutshell is, it's kind of like if you hired, if anybody, which I have, when I used to work out at the gym, which I don't anymore, but I used to, I hired a trainer. And I wanted him to look at my weak muscles and like work on my weak muscles. So he's there to find weak muscles, identify them and help you say, you need to work on that one. For example, let's say somebody has anxiety. They're nervous about the world. They're nervous about finances. They're nervous about their job. They're nervous about never going to get married. So they're, they have a, um, an anxiety issue. So the Yitzhar is there. Oh my gosh, I don't know what you're going to do today. There's no way you're getting through the day today. No way. So he's there or she's there waiting for you first thing in the morning. So you have to have, like if you want to survive the day and do well during the day, you have to have a process to deal with the anxiety because you have a job to go to and you have people to interact with and you can't just crawl under the covers. So the Yitzhar will push you to figure out, I need a plan to get rid of this anxiety. I got to get going. And you will come up with it. But if there was no Yitzhahara, you'd never deal with the anxiety. So the Yitzhahara, even though he's a little annoying, very annoying, he's there to help you. Okay, good. So the Yitzhahara is going to tell you way too much. Okay? I know that because I have Yitzhahara too. So one of my teachers, and I think it's, it's a common knowledge, 
um, share with me that if you're going to make any changes in your life, they must be tiny, really small, tiny changes. Because if you try to do anything big, it won't work. It won't work. Okay. So one of the keys to this is, is picking a slight tiny goal and working on a tiny little doable goal. If you pick anything that you won't do to start with, don't bother. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, we're very hands-on here today. I'd like you to take a mini version of this. Take one, pass it around. And we're going to, while we're sitting here, privately pick one tiny little goal and you're going to write it in one of these areas. But before we do this, we're going to go through the, each of the areas very quickly. Everybody good? Questions, thoughts, revelations, complaints? We're good? Yeah? Okay. You know what you also need? You also need a pen. So, amazingly, I came prepared with pens. Wow. I know, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Cool. And with three colors, too. So you could choose that you can be very individualistic, individualistic and choose a pen color. They're all coming back, all the pens. There's plenty. Yes, please. So the bubbles are all the same size. Yeah, oh, oh, good question. Yes. Nope, but I think it's a great question. But start. No, it's so it's. They're all the same size, and I know what you're saying that like you have to learn how to work on each of them, and make sure that you have time to work on each of them. Are some supposed to be better than others? Very, very, very good question. So we um, have to, in the process of life, get to know ourselves and diagnose ourselves pretty much daily. How are we feeling? And look at ourselves and saying. Of each, each of these five areas, sometimes one ball is going to need a lot more attention than another. And sometimes one ball will say, you know, that one's fine. It's really good now. For example, let's say the person has body ball, exercise is fine, they're sleeping well, they're eating well, they're basically fine. So they think, you know what, I'm good on body. But let's say the career, which is, that's a bad choice actually. Because career gets, usually career gets way too much attention. Because usually, you know, the proof is people say, so what do you do? That's a proof that they identify with their job and probably they're spending 40, 50, 60 hours on a job and, and other areas are suffering. So to your question is you have to self-diagnose and figure out sometimes which ball needs more attention. And sometimes it'll get, the career ball will get large. Sometimes it'll get smaller. Sometimes the body ball gets larger. You know, if somebody, God forbid, had COVID, it got a lot larger. And then, and then when, they, when they healed, it got a lot smaller. So yes, but what I do for myself is I keep one of these cards on my desk and I look at it daily and I di diagnose myself, where am I right now? Am I, getting, am, I, am I giving good attention to all these five areas? Does any one ball need extra attention? That's, but I've been doing this for years. I've been working with a juggler system for probably 20 years. And I've probably taught it to thousands of people. So it works actually really, really well, but you have to diagnose yourself. And to your point, sometimes you might be feeling really imbalanced and not good. And you realize, you know, the soul needs food, soul food. Now, what is soul food? How do you feed the soul? Now, what we're doing right now is we're learning Torah. Okay. The soul loves Torah. So if it's, so if a soul is feeling undernourished and you feel like, for myself, a little bit off, I'll think, you know what, maybe I'm not learning well. My Torah, something's off with my Torah. Or I might say, you know what, I got to talk to the boss a little bit. You know, I need to talk to the Almighty, sometimes in English, sometimes in Hebrew. So I, I just need to talk to him. Or sometimes I just need quiet time, meditation time, get myself rebalanced. So that's, I think, I hope I, I answered your question. You have to, I diagnose myself. And usually if I'm not feeling quite right, I can figure out which of the balls I'm dropping which needs attention. Yeah? I'm going to show you something. In my bag of tricks, you ever seen these, these snowballs? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get close here. Okay. This is what my mind looks like in the middle of the day. Like a lot of thoughts, just tons of thoughts. You know, emails coming in and, 
and what's it called, WhatsApp coming in, and my wife's calling, and my grandkids calling, and, my, and then yeah, I gotta drive somewhere, I gotta go, and then my mind starts getting so full of thoughts. So what I'll do is I'll say, what's, watch what's happening. Now I'm starting to see things again. So what I'll do is I'll take 10 minutes with an app called Calm. Anybody hear the Calm app? I love that app. So I've been doing this recently, take 10 minutes on a calm meditation, and all of a sudden, it goes like, oops, it gets quiet again. I can hear myself think, I can hear my thoughts again. So that's gonna fall kind of somewhere between, somewhere between body and soul, but I need to do that. Otherwise, my mind is just, it looks like that, not good, okay? All right. I'm not pushing calm up, I get nothing on calm, but I like it, okay. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Everybody have a pen and a card? Good. Be really honest with yourself. Look at the five areas. Now, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Am I right? The only one that probably needs extra attention for me is the soul ball. So I wrote here on the back of the card, you're more than just a body, you're a soul. If you're too busy with work, gym, emails, you're heading off an emotional cliff, you need some quiet thinking time each day to reflect on your life, as well as time to learn Torah. That's real soul food, okay? So that, the soul is, you know, that's just something you, act, you ask your Rabbi Malul, um, your teachers, your thoughts, you have to, you know, the soul needs food, and it needs a lot of food. It, you can't ignore the soul ball, because it'll catch up with you, and it, and it does with me when I don't give it attention. So what I want you to do right now is, be very honest with yourself. Look at the five areas and say, in the five areas, which do I feel I'm kind of dropping the ball and I need to make a tiny little goal in that area? A, something that I'll actually do. And I'll give you an example. One, one of my friends who, who took this, um, who I shared each other with, he was doing zero exercise, zero. And he looked like it. Okay, let me just tell you that. So I said, zero exercise? He said, zero, and I'm not doing any exercise. He said, you don't have to do any exercise. But how about this? Could you take a, a walk around the block every other day? He said, that's not exercise. I said, of course that's exercise. He said, that's nothing. I said, it's not some. That's something. I, I said, yeah, I can walk around the block every other day for, for you know, 15. It's going to take me 10, 15. That's nothing. I said, wrong, wrong. Write it on the card. Walk around the block. Every other day, every, not every day, every other day. Could you do that? He said, yeah, it's not a big deal. Do it. He's, things progressed. Let's say he did some healing. Okay? So you start small. You pick a tiny little goal. And you write it. I want you to, like, we have now two minutes, quiet time, to look at your card and write a tiny little goal on the card. Bless you. All of bless all of you, by the way. Good things, clarity, and good things. Now, I what we normally remember. I said that the Sahara is tricky. So what he'll what he doesn't he or she does not let you do is make big plans. So your temptation is going to be to pick two or three areas and make a to do a little. And guess what will happen is you won't do any of it. That's one of the tricks the Sahara. He wants you to grab a lot and then do nothing. 
So that's what I want you to do, starting with the juggle plan, is just take one. Now, if you chose more than one, that's fine. People can do more than one, but I'm saying be easy on yourself, because what you want to do is you want to create a certain momentum going forward, so you'll actually start feeling the feeling, the joy of changing. Because remember, Rod Weinberg says, growing every day, that's living. So once you'll have this one little goal, and you've done it for two or three weeks, and you feel like, you know, now it's part of your life. The guy's walking 15 minutes every other day. It's part of his life. He can take it off his card. He doesn't need it anymore. But now he needs to choose something else. So what I want you to do is take the card. And when you get home, here's the key. The Eitzahar forgets important things too. He'll have you forget this very quickly. What's important is you take the card and you put it. Mine's on my desk. You could put it on your bathroom mirror on your desk, on your refrigerator, but someplace you'll actually see it. Don't let this card disappear. This is precious. Precious. You need to, so you remind yourself each day you wake up in the morning and here's what I'm working on. And then at the end of a week or two, you'll look and you'll say, you know what, this has become part of my life. And you can actually add another little thing to it. And you'll start feeling, we say in Chinese, geschmack, like, <laughs> ah, growing every day. I'm shaping myself. I'm growing. That's going to feel good. Because remember now you're in flight, you're flying the plane. And as you're making these goals, what's happening is your, your mind is starting to get peaceful and calm and happy. So what you can do is you're going to get to the most important question of your life. But you can't ask the question unless your mind is calm. And the most important question in your life is, what's the purpose of my life? They said the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figured out why. So I'm sure you, you, you as I said, I believe everybody's wise in here. They're smart, they're humble, they're curious. So if, if you haven't, I'm sure you've discussed it in, with, in this class, it's a good thing. And I think about it almost every day. What am I living for? What's the purpose of my life? That's super important, but you can't do it unless your mind is calm. So the juggler's gonna get you a place of calm. So you can think things through and you can be clear why you're in flight, destination, what you're going to do when you get there, and so on. Okay. Good news. There's a website. Because you'll be able to go on the website. It's, and the website's very intuitive. MyJuggler.com And you'll get more information on the web. And this is a... Th this whole thing, we're done. This is it. Okay, now this is your flight, your life, your choices. When you finish with this card, you can go to the website, and you can print, it says starter card, you can print another one and then just nix this one or keep it if you want to see, you'll feel good about your progress. Print another one, pick another tiny little goal, start working on it. But the key, you must keep the juggler card in full view. Otherwise, your Yitzhahara will forget it all. Okay, that's what will happen. That's what will happen. Okay. Okay, quick review. Take off. Flight, in flight. We're in flight right now. We're flying our plane, okay? Remember, there is a destination. We will land the plane at some point. We don't know it's age 120 or before. But you want to know that we said the good news was the Jews believe there's life after we leave this world, life after death. How do you prepare? Because there's a long time after we die. It's called eternity. So when your mind's calm with the juggler, you'll have time to really focus on it how to prepare for this life and the next life. That's super, super important. Okay. Do not choose more than one little goal at a time until you become more like on the varsity team. Then you maybe you could do, do two, but not more. When the, when the changes are integrated in your life, then you can throw the card away or keep it and feel good about your growth. Get another one. This is a lifetime process. This is, I, I use a juggler almost every day. Every, every day. When I don't feel right, I look at my, the five balls, I say, I'm dropping a ball, which is it? Oh, I haven't taken my wife on a date now for three weeks. Not good. Okay, honey, what are we doing tonight? We're going out. Great, because I was dropping family friends ball, right? Now that is a glass ball. You drop that one, it, it breaks. It's not rubber, okay? It's a glass ball, okay? Be careful. So. And peep, the guy wasn't exercising, and he was starting to expand, expand, and his wife wasn't happy with him, and he wasn't, he didn't feel good. He's looking better now, but if you don't take care of your body, you know, it, it crashes. 
So each of the five areas needs attention. Probably the most important of all the balls is the soul ball. So when you go to the website, look under the, you know, just touch the soul ball and you get lots of really good ideas on soul food. Okay. So I'm done. It was a pleasure and an honor to be here. I'm here for questions for a few minutes, but thank you so, so much for having me. And I wish you all clarity, bracha, and just continued joy in life. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Sure. So on the icon or the circle of the soul, yes. it shows heart symbols, right? And that kind of implies love. Mm -hmm. like romance, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, romance isn't the only way to feed the soul. What are some of the other ways that you feed the soul that you suggest for feeding the soul? And how do you personally go about them? Great question. I think there's three areas to feed the soul. And it's in Perak Yavis, it's in the Mishnah. Torah learning. So the, the, it's the, there was a very great um, rabbi, his name was the Vilna Gom, And he said, Torah, learning Torah brings clarity, and clarity brings joy. So the less clear we are, the less joy we have. So Torah, I, I make sure that each day I learn Torah, and I design, I have a program which I work with my rabbi on what I should be learning, how much I should be learning. So number one is Torah learning. And there's many ways you can access Torah in class, on H.com, whatever, whichever way. Books, so I, I met with my rabbi and we designed a learning program, so I'm getting a balanced diet of Torah. That's number one. The second area, which I think is very important, is I like, I, I, um, I'm a mushy gushy guy. So um, I need to talk to the Almighty every day. And I talk to him with, with my heart. I, I, got, I mean, he's listening, he loves me, he's my dad, he's my real dad, and I talk to him. You know, I have a prayer book, but I also talk to him throughout the day. And so prayer, I don't even like the word prayer. Speaking to God is another area the soul needs to. And that's the hearts are, we want to develop a, you know, a loving, normal relationship with the Almighty. That's, that's critical. So prayer, so prayer, we're talking to God. And the third area is, kind of relates to community, is kindness, doing kindness for, for people. And the soul loves doing kindness, okay? And there's one bonus area, which is also very important, is called working on your character, Midos work. So I identify for myself, you know, where is my character needs polishing, like a you know, diamond needs polishing, I need polishing. So if a person had an anger problem or a, or a jealousy problem or a selfishness problem, whatever it was, so I work on my character and I'm kind of aware of the things that I'm kind of weak on with my character. And if you're working on those three plus one areas, your soul's getting good attention. It's good to have a supervisor, you know, like a Rabbi Molul type, to help you design the soul area, because you want to make sure this soul needs nourishment, but it needs certain, you know, sometimes it's deficient in some things you may not be aware of, and that's why a wonderful rabbi and Mrs. Malul can help you with that. Good? Okay. Great. Have a wonderful week. Good Shabbos. <laughs>